Hello, Hardy Owners. Welcome. I am Drake Delby, getting in my feelings. Yeah. We are. We have a, a nice Delby and Branchy chat, the ones that people like today. Yes. Uh, but before we tell you what we chatted about, big shout out to cool. our major sponsor behind me today. Yep. Yeah, yeah, alltradescover.com.au, as you can see behind Delby there. It's um, prime real estate. We've got people messaging saying that they've been using it. Mate, it's actually working. Yeah, uh, he's. Uh, I think he's secretly a little pumped about that as well, yeah. making more money than he's actually putting in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, alltradescover.com. Thank you. Thank you to all of the listeners that have actually been going over to All Trades Cover and um, yeah, and finding that they've been better on a lot of in a lot of ways. So that's great. Yeah. That's and if they're feedback. close, then you've been choosing it because they sponsor us, which is fucking incredible. Yeah, so that's so good. Shout out to the community. And how crazy, our two first ever major sponsors, mm. Ian and John, are both mates. Like, they already know each other. Yeah, it's crazy, like, man. It's so weird it's, how the world works. Oh, uh, small world. Perth, yeah. very small. Uh, this episode is also brought to you by Kahuna Golf. Uh, I went and played golf this morning. I wear the hat every single time. Yeah. Um, I couldn't really wear their, their shirt today, but I'll wear their shirt. When I play on Sunday with Jacques Barrett. Do you oh, want to yeah. come play? I would love to come play. Yeah, what cool. time? Uh, I haven't sorted, but uh, right. Jacques. As long as it's like eight or nine, yep. I've got to meet with my fantasy footy group that I haven't met. I've been playing, <laughs> oh my God. I've been playing in this league for like <laughs> yep. years and they're, they're elite, man. Okay. So we're having a catch up. Then they're coming to my show. Sick. So, All right, well. But yeah, I'll play for sure. Uh, um, so Jacques Barrett is in town. We're going to go play golf. We'll wear that stuff and we'll absolutely crush it because we're yeah. wearing Kahuna. Yep. Um, it does feel good. Um, it looks good. Yeah. And if you want to look good like us, if you want to be like us, uh, then you've got to go through a lot of trauma. But if you want to look like us on the golf field, you've got Hard Yarns 15 as your discount code. Yeah, he's a, he's a legend. And um, do you know what? I'm going to call it it's the the attire, but I am playing some sensational golf. Yeah, at the good. Delby. Yeah. I, I even played well this morning. I can belt her. I'm loving golf. I'm yeah. back on. I'm learned, fucking on. <laughs> I learned how to hit my hybrid last week and flop shot, bro. It was fucking... <laughs> I did a boss's flop shot of all time. Thanks, and, Kahuna. And this episode is also brought to you by Raunchy... Uh, Raunchy Brewing Co. is, um, yeah, they've been fucking with us from the start. So, he- so Henry's, uh, the Irish pub yeah. in Northbridge, and that's where me and Wolfie are starting our uh, comedy room. Fuck yeah. And where Delby can it. just get up whenever the fuck he wants and hopefully headline and save us some money. Hell or yeah. want some money. <laughs> fuck yeah. Uh, but today we talked mental health, yeah. basically. A little bit of domestic violence stuff, but yeah. not, not too deep. Um, yeah, we didn't like push. Like when stuff goes in the mainstream media, you expect us to push back against it because mm. of the you know the anti-establishment style. But we sort of agree a bit with the uh, domestic violence yeah. stuff. But we have a good open chat about it, how it's not black and white. Yeah, uh, which was great. Well, it could be Chinese. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yeah, our own struggles, a how we quotes, dealt with them, a few motivational quotes, quotes. Um, yeah. and Just a spooky story by Delby at the end. Oh yeah, I like that one. So I want to do more spooky stories. Yeah, I we'll love do that. the spooky. Yeah. Well, all, all right. right. Uh, join the Patreon, guys. Ad free. There'll be a, um, each episode that you listen to. If you don't want the ads, it's only five bucks a and, month. And minimum. we're and we're about to record a Patreon episode in yeah. five minutes with Wolfie. Fuck yeah! So that's a good that's a good one. Get on board. Right. Let's get hard. Let's get hard. Welcome to Hard Yarns Podcast. I am fucking fat. <laughs> <laughs> Anything Chris White says, please <laughs> disregard it. 5D is actually a state of being. It's a unity consciousness. That was Hard Yarns with me, Frankie Rose. So I'm going to throw it over to your co-host. Daniel Delby. And Cameron Brand. I would do this and then I'd gong. <laughs> <laughs> Free in attendance for the millions listening at home. <laughs> Let's get hard. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right, you start. So, welcome to the Hard Yarns Podcast. We've already done the intro, but we are going to work on some motivation. We've been speaking with Wolfie off air. Yeah, fuck yeah. He's uh, motivated. We've got Squealing Pig Comedy dropping on the 25th. Yeah, uh, 28th? 25th. 25th, I think Wolfie oh, said. Oh, yeah, whatever the date is, yeah. Uh, is it May? May. May, May 28th, I thought it was. It looks like we've got May 23rd. Wolfie, what day are you dropping Squealing it's a Thursday, Pig? Thursday, Thursday. So whatever Thursday twenty third, the week after of May, so thirtieth of May. Yeah, it must be. So it's dropping around that time. Around that time, yeah. <laughs> got Jesus. the sick logo. Looks like a Banksy mm. work of art. And yeah. um, Wolfie's motivated as fuck, and he's just. I think he's got a brilliant idea of having a squealing pig hot dog stand. Mm. Well, the, extra uh, coin. So if we can convince Ian to have it in the venue, yeah, it's a win 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 because Ian gets more patrons in. Yep, Wolfie can make some money, and it adds it. It's guerrilla marketing. 
That's true. Because people have a, a great experience with this delicious hot dog when they've had a drink. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, and, and the they, association. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, then yeah. they look at the wrapper and they're like, oh, Squealing Pig, oh, comedy. Yeah. And they have a two for one on their, mm. on their wrapper. It's fucking genius. That's so good. So for the maybe the listeners that didn't know we were doing it, me and Wolfie, um, through the guidance of Delby, are starting our own comedy room with uh, Raunchy and Sir Henry's at Sir Henry's yep. and, um, in Northbridge. So it's going to be a weekly one, Thursdays, and with the ultimate goal to build up to being a really good comedy hub for fringe yeah so which it will be because you got yeah your garden you got inside yeah so and the idea be will be to turn that room into a hopefully a, like a 150 to 200 seater if we can s- set it up right if not like just a good 100 100 or so seater i think the i think the um subtitle should be where woke people go to die <laughs> that's great <laughs> um and then the, uh, the beer garden outside will be like we might we may have a few little showcase shows out the back, but I yeah. think a bit of a also hangout area for the comedians. Yeah. And, and I think yeah. showcase will be the way to go because of the because of the size. Yeah, with great comics on. Yeah, like you can't fail there. No, hundred percent. So especially with Wolfie's connects. Yeah, you know yeah, Amos and he'd probably come on and a and few the, others. The aim is it's curated as well, so like Wolfie will decide who goes on, mm-hmm. um, and it'll be a place where we can trial new material. And basically, um, in conjunction with the podcast that we're creating, where you will be able to hear all the premises, us riff riff it up and work it out and Mm -hmm. give each other tags. And then go try that joke at the club. It's going to be sick. It's going to be fun. And then... um, It's exciting. And then like uh, with Wolfie's connections, that's exciting as well. So potentially, hopefully sneak in a few big names to come on and do 10 minutes and try some new shit. Yeah. and then um, his over east connections as well. So. Yeah, it'd be sick. Perth fun. Comedy Fest is on now. I saw some of the names here, but our comedy apps have been bombing. So, <laughs> depends. Unfortunately, like, guys, uh, we're not going to have too many I don't think comedians so. on. Nah, without oh, well, just look, to discuss. I think there's room for it, but just like it has to be direct topics. Yeah, or yeah, we have to figure out a way to do that because you guys don't listen. Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, a bit like to be fair, and I said this to you, like I don't listen to the comedian episodes with. Um, Joe Rogan. Rogan, for example, back in yeah. the day when he used to listen all the time, I'd skip past them if I didn't have another option. Yeah, I'd only listen at Bill Burr um, and Theo. Yeah, so. yeah. So I guess um, uh, if we want to keep the, the comedians coming on, unless they're a big name, um, keep the comedians coming on because they're fun. So yeah, have fun with them. Let's do we'll like conspiracies. I love your yeah, yeah fake news. Um, I love your idea about spooky stories. Yeah, uh, maybe we can do that with Squirrely. Actually, oh, when yeah? he comes on. Yeah, I've got a few in the barrel. Yeah. But, yeah. Do you want to do that today or do you want to do... Um, we'll do a little preview at the end. Yeah, okay. We'll see how it goes. Good, that's a good idea. That's a good so. idea. But it is uh, last last month, April, we did, uh, just unintentionally, it was very anti-establishment. April Fool's. It was April Fool's. <laughs> um, it was a lot of... Uh, it was anti-establishment April. We had like digital ID, a bit of COVID stuff. Um, the... Uh, what was the last one with Chloe? That was the the uh, law. The fuck. What was the name of it? That bought that law. The bill. The, yeah, no, the, the pandemic the treaty. pandemic treaty. Yeah. yeah. So we had a lot of that style uh, this month. I want to go down the mental health May. motivation May sort of um, manifestation. That whole yeah. that whole thing. The M. <laughs> yeah, mate. M- May eight. The mate day. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's next Wednesday. Yeah. Cool. So I remember last year we we're going to try plan a run for run for your mates on May eight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was a Friday. Yeah, the mate, but I've so got... So that ended up being that run that we did. Um, yeah, I've got the ultra like three days after, yeah. so it would be not ideal. But yeah. potentially, I, I don't think I'd have to do it next year if I'm going to do what I want to do this year. So maybe next year we actually make it our own one. Yeah, or what May about 8th. next year... Well, what about this Wednesday? Hopefully we can convince Wolf if he's free. Mm. Um, we'll have a chat with a mate day mm. and we'll, we'll call Wolfie. But in pod and go, oh, I like you that. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and do you like the idea of, uh, I put it up on the Instagram story, I don't know if you've seen it. I was jogging and I was saying... I, was that the voice note? Yeah, the know? voice notes. So you know how like you'll see like a Theo Von will get voice notes and then he'll respond to it in the pod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that style. Yeah, so if yeah, you're I a listener, that. like yeah. call up. If you want to be vulnerable, be vulnerable. If you want to talk shit and be funny, be yeah. funny. Whatever you want to do. But I reckon through the whole month of May, if you want to send in some voice notes, just message it to us on the Instagram. Yeah. And um, and then we respond and we can either have a laugh, we yeah. can like, oh, thanks for being vulnerable, whatever. Yeah. And relate to it ourselves. Yeah, that's cool. But yeah, I mean, we... We can we, do that more often. Let's get, yeah, we, we fuck yeah. I, lo- I love I love listening to theorists one to call. So. Yeah. And then potentially just... Oh, what uh, about we Patreon? If, if, is it going to be something... Okay, Patreons, yeah, we'll give Patreons first access. Yeah. Like 100%, like they every single Patreon gets theirs on if they want it. Yeah. And then we'll filter the, um, yeah, yeah, through yeah. some of them. Cause, so you if know, you're a Patreon, you get a definite... Yes. Like it definitely goes on. Yep. 
And if not, then we'll... we'll and everything know. will be anonymous. Yeah, to make nice. you Unless you go, G'day mate, it's Jeff. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jeff or, of Waterloo. Or or I live on a Reedy Avenue and I've got two wives. Her name's Crystal or my kid's name's fucking Holden. And, it, <laughs> and uh, I just want to know, what do you reckon? Drinking and driving, cool I, or not? I think there's one person we'd know. G'day, my name's Squirly. Oh, oh, Squirly. I've just got a question about fishing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I see the fishing man. The guy caught the million dollar barra. Oh, i seen that. The young fella. i seen that. How good's that? Fuck. I yeah. loved his, his response. He was, was good. He goes, I'm happy. I'm going to pay off the loans from my mum and dad. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go fishing again. I'm going to go get a boat. A new <laughs> boat. <laughs> That's so good, man. So I fun. love that. That's, That's so, so good. Um, Imagine if you didn't know and you just caught the barrier. Like, oh, it's this little fucking mm. tag. Fuck, pull it out, throw it back. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, should we get controversial and talk? Because I don't know what it, going on about it and quickly touch on the uh, domestic violence stuff, the conversation. Uh, What's your thoughts on that? I, uh, I saw a guy on... Um, is it Four Corners or Question Time, whatever? Yeah, yeah. He made it excellent. Like, I mm. think I showed... I yeah, showed yeah. Actually, let's play it. I sent it to you. Yeah, the How Dare You? Yeah, yeah. this guy, like, fuck, he's a criminologist. Yeah, or send it to me because then it'll go through the... Blue I think stuff. I already have. Was it on TikTok or was it on Insta? Um, I feel like it might oh, have been on TikTok. It's gone viral a few times, so I can sort of just find it anyway. But, yeah, um, describe what it is and then Yeah, I'll here it is. Just forward it to me How and then I'll play you it. go into oh, yeah. politics... In an environment like this, when one woman is murdered every four days, and all you two can do is immediately talk about politics. That is just disgraceful. Is it any wonder frontline services aren't getting the money that they want? You can talk about putting out billions of dollars. AUKUS costs $300 billion. You made the comment we need to listen more. For God's sake, how long do we have to listen to politicians like you and the rest of you high-horsing about we have to have a Royal Commission, we have to do this. Everyone here knows what the answer okay, is. OK, so what are they? Like, okay. what are they? Mm. First of all, that man should never have been released on bail. OK, that is the very first thing that happened. If a male has a history of crimes of violence, of any form of domestic violence, coercion, physical, emotional, they should not have the presumption of bail. There will be people who vehemently disagree about the rule of law, about the right of individuals, about the innocence before guilty, but what does society want? We want those poor girls up there from those high schools, one in every four of them are likely to be sexually assaulted after the age of 15. And you all sit here and pontificate about what we're doing. You're not doing enough. New South Wales Police have had a prior arrest policy for at least 30 years, and we cannot arrest our way out of this. But for the immediate concern of the women here, they need to have that offender taken off the street to give them breathing space to get away to a women's refuge. Over the decades, all governments of all persuasion, state and federal, you have patient dumped people with mental health and drug issues onto the street, which are the underlying causes of domestic violence. And I know, because I've read 1,362 coroner's reports in New South Wales over the last 20 years, and that is the common element. So you talk about domestic violence. It is more than just domestic violence. Mm -hmm. You don't need a Royal Commission. That money needs to go into frontline services now. I can. I think he's just nailed it, eh? Yeah. Like it's not just a simple. Yeah, conversation. it's not just a guy bashing his misses. Yes. There's drug abuse. There's mental health. There's yes. so much. Uh, there's poor. Uh, like, Even the demonization of masculinity to a point in which correct. people feel uh, ashamed of some of their traits. Yeah. Like that's. Uh, there's a, a whole number of issues that are happening. That yeah. At least what's. That's not suggesting that that's fine. What's happening? Yeah. At all. That's just. Uh, it needs to be the preventative. As well, mm. but like money in the front line is the fucking number one thing we need to do. I was We're speaking to my mates a paramedic the other day. Yep. The calls that they get because St. John's is private that mm. they'll send ambulances to, mm. the calls they get are fucking ridiculous, man. Like mm. people will call up, um, oh fuck, I can't remember the, the one he told me, but they'll call up for like, I can't solve my jigsaw puzzle. One of the women was in an ambulance and called another ambulance yeah. because she wasn't happy with her ambulance. So there's two ambulances dealing with a mental health patient yeah, and they sent it yeah. while someone's having a heart attack. Mm. There's a person that can call for an ambulance and then there's ramping. There's the fucking wait lists. My friend who deals with the NDIS yeah. and their workers, like I was with her when she was getting calls 
like yeah. at 10 o'clock at night. They'll go to the weight room and be there for three or four hours and yeah. the person will just leave. Mm. Like the money, yeah, it needs to go into that. But there's so many other circumstances other than just this guy beats his wife. We yes. need to have preventative measures of teaching men how to fucking deal with their emotions, getting like help before it gets to that point. But mm. yeah, I think we should do a full, I want, I've, like I said, yeah, I yeah. reckon we should do a full episode on it. Yeah. Guys, it's not okay to fucking beat your missus. Nah, fuck no. You're, you know, you're allowed to be annoyed and angry at your circumstances, but you can't fucking go and murder. Yeah someone because you've had a disagreement oh mate like and, and, and it's not just the domestic violence side of things it's also the you know the sexual assault and yeah. and uh taking things too far sometimes and even i like back in the like we grew up in a like that footy culture mm. and you look back i look back and cringe on the way i was as yeah. a teenager and a young man growing up because i thought that was okay and yeah. I've, I've definitely fallen into traps where i've uh, misread situations. Yeah. And you well, go, it's fucking harder now ever than before. Oh, well, it's really, yeah. it's fucking difficult. Now, now I get stuck in a situation. I'm a man, single man again, and yeah. I'm trying to get back out there. And I don't know whether I'm considered a fucking bitch for not being so forward with my intentions. Yeah. Or then, like, the opposite. If you go too far, they're like, oh, well, hey, that's hey, inappropriate. Yeah. So it is a difficult situation that, and I'm not trying to say, oh, that's, it's okay for men to act yeah. the way they do. It's not. It's just become a fucking clusterfuck. Yeah, the PC culture has, it's muddied the waters and it's made, yeah. it's even like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, this is going to probably be, I don't know how to frame it, but something that was considered flirting by both sexes, yeah. let's say back in the day, yeah. something that was considered flirting now would be, the PC brigade has mm. turned men's and women's minds to think that something yeah. that was once considered flirting is now a sexual assault where or a sexual harassment. Yeah. Where in reality it probably isn't. Yeah. You know, and I'm not talking about like fucking grabbing someone's pussy or whatever like that. Like yeah. just little small things mm. where like you might misread a situation and go in for a kiss. Yeah. And then now that is considered a sexual assault. Whereas mm. before it's Oh, I thought we were flirting. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's a sexual assault case. Yeah, it used to be just more em oh, embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. But even the girl might be like, no, nah, like, you know. Yeah. And even the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If girls did that to me, I was like, oh, fuck, nah, this is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not going to say that's sexual assault. And then we add into things, all the things like power, strength, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. However, I think like the PC brigades almost brought it to the point where the girls, they've convinced these girls that something that is considered part of like, Mm. almost the courtship process yeah. rejection is natural yeah doesn't mean it's a sexual assault but mm. again i'm not being an apologist no. or i'm not defending sexual assault mm. trying to trying to frame it in a way where the lines have changed everything's sort of gone so far pc you almost need to go hey i'm mm. can i kiss you yeah which i think is probably the nice the best way to do it yeah it takes away some of that like I, that's impromptu to be fair that's what I've been doing. I've been saying late. that lately. I did like, it well, not lately because I haven't been kissing anyone. But like, okay, if I do, it'll be like, hey, are we cool to? Can I kiss you? I, well, I'll, I will, I will not mention names. Yeah. But I ingest. Uh, Who's Jess? <laughs> I in, <laughs> in, you were in Jess. No, while I was in bed with a girl, I said so. Just yeah. to be aware, yeah. you may be about to <laughs> <laughs> engage. You may be about to have an orgasm. <laughs> Is that all right with you? <laughs> and she pissed at laughing, yeah. and that was good. It was it actually broke yeah. the tension. But um, well, maybe that's the way forward. Is maybe the way forward is it's just normalised. Yeah, and you just go, you know, hey, is it cool if we if I kiss but you? The fact that there's I, something gentlemanly about that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that I had to ingest, ask for consent, even yeah. though we're naked. Like, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. I know what, what's about to happen. Yeah. Like, but but yeah. even girls, listen, the best thing you can do for a guy, we've got no fucking idea, man. The best thing you can do <laughs> yeah, is... Yeah, we don't. Honestly, <laughs> like we wouldn't know if you're flirting with us yeah. or whatever. Like the best thing you can do is just grab their hand mm. and put it where you want it. Mm. Or alternatively, grab the dude's dick. <laughs> no. We're, no. we're not going to go, oh, <laughs> no, that's a not. sexual assault. <laughs> we're either going to be like, oh... No, nah, no, nah, like it's not. That's not where I see this. Yeah. Or we're gonna be like, thank fuck, man. She wants the dick. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there's nothing sexier to me than if a girl grabs my dick and just mm. start, like, just starts the movement, man. Mm. 
But like, yeah, take 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 it out of our hands. Just literally, what, literally take yeah, it out of yeah, our hands. Yeah. What's the um, <laughs> put it into yours? What's the? I think Jimmy Carr. Just watched Jimmy Carr special, and uh, to be fair, I, I didn't really rate Jimmy Carr special. I thought it was very provocative on intentionally. On purpose, yeah, yeah, I didn't feel it felt. Yeah. Anyway, regardless, there is a joke towards the end where he's having a riff with a kid um, at the end, and it's like a 14, 15 year old, and he's teaching them how to not. Uh, what not to do in the future when yeah. he starts to get with Because he was a virgin to his 26, Jimmy Carr. Really? Yeah. Fucking hell. Um, and uh, he makes this little joke uh, towards the end. Is basically, it's the last line of the, the whole thing. And he just says, um, let her take your dick out of your pants. Yeah. Like, don't need, like when you take, it's a, yeah. it's a long build up to yeah. when do you take your dick out of your pants? Yes. Like if when she at, does If it. you're at the shopping centre? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> you know what the rule is? Let her take your yeah. dick and then it's all good. That's a great rule. It's a good rule. Yeah. But Just like, let her do it. And dudes, if you don't want that to happen, yeah. you are allowed to grab their hand and move it away and go, hey, yeah. no thanks. But... Mm. I reckon that'll happen. Mate, I've definitely three percent of the time. I've definitely been presumptuous in hooking up and stuff in yep. in bedrooms and stuff like that, and and all that stuff shit, and made mistakes myself, and and um, it, yeah, you apologize and then you move forward, and then you end up always like it. It ends up being something you um not bond over, but it's something mm. you, you sort of like you go take a step back. Yeah, and, and well, I remember yeah. a little while ago. I think it might have been two years now in Bali. Like, I had no idea. I was talking to this Dutch chick, and like. I felt like we will get along pretty well, but she was 25 or 26 and I think I was 35 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, look, man, I don't know if I'm too old for you, but I reckon you're really beautiful. I yeah. go, I said, um, someone had tell, told me that I, I, I'm a good opener and not a good closer. Yeah. I never know when to close. I'm just going to be like, so I just was like, do you want to kiss me? <laughs> and yeah. she goes, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, sick. Yeah. So I was just well, asking the question. very easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, much yeah. Easier. yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, wow. just put it out there. Be yeah. open and be honest about your intentions. It's easy to say that, man. I get yeah. fucking because so, you, you the fear of rejection means oh that means if they reject you then and there yeah it's never going to happen and that that's not yeah, necessarily and if so, true. So be it. And then if, if so, not, yeah, yeah, correct. But so. um, yeah, I would like to get an expert on um on well that's what this violence. well essentially like this month is going to help that we're looking at especially men because men are the ones perpetrating the violence. Yes, if we can get preventative measures on mm-hmm. or people to discuss or yes. we can figure out what the root cause is mm-hmm. um, and figure out how to address that. Because I'm sick of seeing ex-boyfriends murder their partners. Like, that makes me sick to my fucking stomach. Yeah. Like, you're a weak cunt, man. Like, as much as she's... Whatever she's done to you, it could be horrific. Like, mm. you just can't go... Especially if you've got kids. Like, Mate, murdering the mother of your kids, like... i just fuck. seen, like, a domestic... No, not abuse, violence. But i just seen a domestic as I was getting out... In the car park. Yeah, All right. domestic. Yeah. A guy tried to go over to calm it down and then the other guy started So you don't fucking know me and it blew up a little yeah. bit. And then the guy just, well, okay, whatever. Yeah. And then, but I sit there and I'm, I'm just watching from a distance in case potentially like the violence mm. side comes out. Part of me wanted to go over to the couple. They're screaming at each mm. other. Nothing's going to be resolved by screaming at mm. each other. And... I wanted to go Excuse over. Me. Mushroom Jesus. I wanted to just go over and say, guys, nothing's gonna happen. Like you're not gonna resolve anything. Yes. By yeah. you need to just both be quiet, calm down. And they turn around and stab you. Yeah. And <laughs> so this is why I didn't go do it. But that's what I wanted to say. But there's me sure, saying. I reckon that, you could give it a go. Imagine uh, if that I don't was know like if, it done if God's anything. plan was to put you there so you could say. But even that's that's preventative. Me stopping that escalating any mm. further if I ha- had to do it. That's what we're talking about, preventative. Yeah. But but then it potentially puts me in harm's way. Or but you're or a fast, you're a fast runner. Yeah, I am fast. So. <laughs> but the the I don't know. I just I didn't know what to do in that yeah. situation. I kept. Uh, close to the situation just in case it did escalate. Yeah. And it just looked like it was a shouting match. The guy didn't look like he was ever in a, a place where he was going to yeah. physically hurt her. But they were yelling and they were frustrated at each other. Uh, um, so that stuff, like, it's interesting. I don't know how to what, what the best thing to do is there. So maybe we can get some people on. Uh, I just spoke to Greg Hire for a good half an hour yesterday over the phone because it's been impossible for us to catch up. But um, he and Stitch and Time are going to send us some experts yep. in the field so psychologist and then a, a former NBL player is going to come on and talk about their struggles and the way they've dealt with it and now how they're using it to yeah. implement it in um, in their talks and stuff so it's uh, that will be great but uh, I don't know what on the flip ways. side though we need like after speaking with Robert Tedeschi some things that women do to men is just fucking oh, like deplorable yeah. yeah 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 so it's not just all men are just like well, it's not men are just committing these domestic violence acts mm. there's 
things that we can both do yes. to prevent it. And I'm not suggesting no. that it's the woman no. that you, no one ever deserves it. But mm. there are things that you could probably do mm. to help future any man in yeah. the future. Yeah. So like, yeah, like uh, denying a man access to his kids because it, you've been hurt. Mm. It's fucked, man. And like also, there needs to be some help for women for the because there's just as many crazy women as there are men. Yeah, like yeah, it is a it's a interesting love makes you do fucking yeah the shit. hurt and the pro, the be able to, the ability to process pain hurt people hurt people hurt people yeah that's what so, that's what happens yeah and it's hard I see it um, I've been seeing it a lot lately and it's hard uh, if someone says something rude to me and they're hurt. I I'm mm. in, I'm comfortable enough in myself to understand that fucking I'm actually I feel sorry for that person mm. and I actually want to help them and I let, I give them their breathing space but some people aren't like that mm. and they've had a bad day well, well even they don't from have personal experience it's like some you don't want to hurt people but sometimes speaking how you feel about that person mm. You feel like they need to hear it otherwise they're never going to learn it or never understand yeah. it yep. so you need to like put into words this is what you've done that's made me feel this way and essentially we are all responsible for our own feelings however like spelling out to somebody this is why i think you're a narcissist this is what you've done which yeah. fucking sucks because it always just ends yeah in a circle mm. but it does feel good just going this is how i view you from what you've done to me but it's, it's interesting it's therapeutic and it gives you closure but it doesn't Hmm. I had a situation. Someone has to be the bigger person and just go, okay, that's fine. And then you just hold it in, but like, fuck, man. There's more, less holding it in and understanding what it is and probably more so understanding that you're not going to be able to help them. Yeah. They need to come to that realisation themselves. Yeah. And it's, fuck, that is, it's quite a test for yourself yeah. to be able to go, I can see what they've done to me and they're still doing to other people or whatever, and, and it's a con, uh, constant habit or a continuing trend. Um, but sometimes it's easiest, not easiest, sometimes it's best to let them find out for themselves. Yeah. And if that's what they don't, if they don't learn that, then that will be, that 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 is their karma. That yeah. is their life. That, uh, as bad as, as that sounds, you can't, ch- you can't change anyone's journey. And we talk about it all the time with that. Um, that, uh, you know, you know what, if, People, you can never change anyone's mind. Yeah. So people, will, when people want to know, they will ask, basically. Um, yeah. That's just, I'm going to send this text off because that's helped me there. Oh. Yep, good for a situation. See, this, yeah. is, what, this is what we're here for, Delby. Yeah. Just to vent for each other. You've actually been very good for me over the last uh, four or five years because you've, um, uh, you're one of the blokes I feel like I can chat to. I've got four or five of me mates that I feel like I can go to. Um, but it, um, I never I never call anyone mm. when I'm upset or anything like that. But I'll use this yeah. uh, as a bit of a thing. Still says that I I, I never reach out. Yeah, and I should. Yeah. Um, I don't think I need to reach out anymore. At any, uh, I'm not in any dark place anymore. I'm actually probably for the first time in a very long time confident enough to say I'm in a good place, mm. like a fucking good place, the yeah. best place I think potentially I've ever been. It's genuinely that good, and um, I I uh, I guess I got through that myself, but um, now having gotten through that stage, if I ever get through a tough time myself, I know that I have to call my mates mm. because I am completely aware that tough situations will happen again. Yeah, and um, yeah, not calling. Even my best mate, Bernsey, like just it did not even did not even try to reach out to him, even though I knew in a second he would um, he would uh, come around and check on me. Yeah. And he did once. He just popped around at like eight o'clock at night. He's just worried about me. He come and checked. And I was, I actually wanted help that night. Yeah. I wanted company. And I was like, Nah, it's all good, mate. Nah, thanks though. Really appreciate mm-hmm. it. Like. That was when my mum stuff was all yeah. happening. And um, so even when it was thrown in my face, the help, mm. I still threw it away. Yeah, it's weird because I've got a weird like trigger where like I might want to 
see someone, but then when I'm there, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I want to go. Yeah, you know, like I don't, want, I don't really want to be here. Yeah. But like, I think so. Maybe I wonder if, what that is. I don't know. Like, I, I might be there for like ten minutes, and I just go. Oh, it does yeah. help though. Like, uh, when was it? Something talking us. I talked. I think it was me, mate, Teddy. I think I talked through something with him once. I can't remember what it was. Mm. It wasn't. It wasn't like really bad, but it was just something I was struggling with a little bit. Um, and I talked to him over the phone for ten minutes. Oh, it was about my mum. It was my mum stuff, so it was pretty serious. And um, talking to him, uh, like fuck, it helped, man. Mm. Like he just listened. Yeah, I mean, and then he because just because talking it is almost like journaling it because it's getting out of your mind mm. that that convo that you have with yourself. Yeah. Oh, she's fucked. Well, she's done this. Yeah, but then you've done this. And yeah. Then instead of having that internal, you can almost like let mm. the poison out of your mouth. Mm. And have somebody. Well, it's the negative. even just it could be anybody. Just the fact that you're saying it and yeah. it's coming out, yeah. then you hear how it sounds, and you go, "Oh, actually, yeah, this sounds a bit crazy." Or yeah, I'm right. Like, yeah, I'm justified. I'm being gaslit here. Yeah, and then the person will go, "Yeah, that's you're being gaslit." Yeah, you know, or or uh, yeah, man, that's fine. Mm. You know, and but just saying it and having a person there to listen is mm. pretty good. Well, that's that as is, long as you're not looking for them to solve your problem. Yeah, that is the first time. And the only time I called someone for help, and it was Teddy, and he was in Mexico. And yeah. the only reason I chose him was because it was two o'clock in the morning. Mm. I'd just been told my mum was going to die, yeah. and I had to say goodbye, and I needed to talk to someone. And I still felt like I couldn't call and wake someone up. Uh, nah, dude, everybody would be I know. completely cool with that. So, but I called him, and he was in Mexico, so the time yeah. difference, and we spoke, and literally ten minutes of talking to him, yeah. and he actually calmed me and made me feel a bit more um, leveled about it. He yeah. was good. What I do recommend is the best thing he did is he just listened. Yeah. And then he offered some calming, like, logic. to yeah. Logic's all, all hard I, when, you, when, you're, when your world's fucking like a hurricane. Mm, all, I, all I can control is this. Yeah. Just focus on that. And um, you can't change anything else. Yeah. And it actually was really helpful to hear that. Mm. Um, Even though you know it, right? Like, you already oh, know that. 100%, but man. When you're in the eye of the storm, you can't see outside of the storm. Mm. Sounds like a saying. I should write that down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the quote? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to do that shortly. But yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, logic, hearing it from someone else, knowing that you're not crazy or maybe, hey, man, you're fucking acting a bit crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like you're, you, you're overreacting. Yeah. You know, this is the reality of it. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, maybe I am. And that's going to help. Mm. So no matter what, if they listen, even if whatever they say, just don't call someone that you know is too close to the mm. to the source or to the to the issue. If they're if they're too affected by it, it's just going to get emotional and heated again. Yeah, I think you said it once, and it was actually quite good. If you do get that call, ask them if they want to listen. Yeah, listener, yeah. or they want advice. Yeah, because that um that is really good. Sometimes they people do just want yeah someone to listen, especially women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. The amount of times yeah, yeah. I've had the call where it's like, I go, no, I don't want oh, advice. Yeah. I'll start going, well, it's pretty easy. The answer yeah, is yeah, this. Yeah. No, no, like, you just do this. Yeah. No. No. I just need you to listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just fucked. It's just illogical. A hundred percent. But um, yeah. No, that's uh, that's good. I didn't realise we are going to go down that path. But that's, uh, yeah, we should do a full episode on domestic violence or at least um, like potentially the, the male yeah. mental health side of things because the mental health, especially men's mental health, is obviously contributing to that. It's a big contributor. Yeah. And um, and it's just like when you when you blame, um, you know, school shootings on yeah. guns. Mm. Yes, of course. Mm. Of course that's an issue. But they're, they're completely disregarding the, you know, the prescription drug uh, yeah. pandemic over there and mental health illnesses. and Lack of parents. <laughs> exactly. Fucking, yeah, so yeah. it's not just one thing yeah that, um but yeah the, the domestic stuff um well, generally like when the someone AFL's makes getting behind it now which is like <sighs> i'm not i don't know how i feel about like sports the AFL getting you mm. know because if they're getting behind a certain whatever the issue is mm. it's almost like saying you need to think this way like i love footy mm. but if you love footy then you will agree with it and you know if it's a great cause fine yeah but sometimes like if it was the pride round, for example, mm. like what if you are really, and each person to their own, it doesn't affect me, but mm-hmm. if you're religious and you watch AFL and yeah. they're saying, you yeah. know, let's be proud, 
Why? Yeah. Like, why do you have to give me that message? That's your sexuality. It has nothing to do. Yeah. Like, that's something that you don't choose. It's what you're born with. So, like, why are we... Mm. Why celebrate? Who gives a fuck? Mm. Like, we celebrating pride? Mm. Like, celebrating, hey, I like to get blowjobs. Are we going to have blowjob yeah. round? Because yeah. I fucking... This is what I like to do sexually. Yeah. But if it's domestic violence, you're pushing a positive message because your audience is probably your target market. Mm. And, yeah, you know... That's a good point. So yeah, that actually... Because I, I never know how I feel about a sport yeah. stepping in, but you make a very good point. The target audience, and I'd say, you know, 60, 70% of the audience is men. Yeah. and Because um, if it was like the vaccine or something, you like, get politics out of sport. But something yeah. like this, you probably, I think 99% of the people would agree it's great. Mm. But then how even many- saying a minute silence before for fallen victims, I'm like, I don't know if that's too far or not, because like mm. a lot of male-on-male violence is not stopped and it's not like yeah. you know we're not oh we're doing this compared to this but why like, is it becoming why are they making an issue of it now is it because it's gotten to a point where or is it i always am dubious yeah there's some push recently yeah why i don't know maybe there's some money to be made somewhere like the carbon tax but did they i, I, I did whatever they think it is going to be a divisive thing don't know whatever it is i don't think I do. I don't it. think that this topic has any negatives to it, except for demonising men. Maybe it is the attack on masculinity again, yeah. but it's not masculine to yes to commit domestic violence. No. One thing, but it is another demonising of how shit men are. Yeah. One thing I did, uh, I liked Nikki Justice wrote this. What's actually Nikki's last real last name? I, I'm not sure actually. Anyway, Nikki she's Justice, local comedian. Justice. She's a partner of. Um, uh, Andrew Hamilton. Andrew, Andrew Hamilton, who we've had on the podcast. Um, she's a legend. She was here. We'll get her on, actually. She's fucking doing real good stuff. Um, but she put up a little thing, and she did, obviously, after this, she had to disclose, I'm not saying that the domestic violence stuff isn't worth uh, mm. looking into. But her point was, like, I'm, I've been a part of the domestic violence. I've had domestic violence except for murder. Yeah. Uh, every form of domestic violence except for murder um, she's had uh, done to her. So she's a big advocate for it. But she made a point saying, like, all these people are marching for the 28 dead women in Australia, Mm. but nothing for the Palestinians Mm. in Gaza. And, again, I don't want to say that you can't do both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's not suggesting that you can't do both. Yeah. But um, people are wanting to mourn for these 28 women, which is, I think that's fine. It should be done. uh, Some sort of, uh, something yeah, needs to be done with uh, domestic violence, but yeah, the, there should maybe be. Maybe it is a maybe it is a don't look at what's happening here and let's focus on this. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, because you always got to look at what's narratives being pushed. Because domestic violence has always been there and it's always been an issue that's disgusting and yeah. should be quashed. So why now? Yeah, um, it mm. is. Stra- we, it would be is interesting it? to find out mm. what there's been. There's probably been some sort of mm. narrative or some sort of. Because the media could have reported this at mm. any point. Yeah. You know? So, I don't know. Potentially there's something. Oh, well, pandemic treaty. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on. Yeah. So Look the other way. Potentially. That's f- how, wh- whatever the thing is, I think this is a positive. To have a discussion about it. Yeah. Yeah. But seriously, guys, don't fucking beat up your girlfriends, man. Yeah. Pretty fucking simple, eh? Yeah. Go hit a punching bag. Like, well, I think this me. is where we do have to s- step in and become... Stronger men, mm. and uh, they—I uh, can't remember who talks about it. It's probably fucking. It's probably old mate Peter jo- uh, Jordan Peterson or someone like that talks mm. about strong men are able to um, control their emotions. Yeah, and um, and they do it in in martial arts, and it's the ability to be able to hurt someone and mm. and then choose not to use it. That's mm. the mental strength, and so we're not building that mental strength in men. Um, and we're actually demonising them for trying to be stronger. Yeah. So, yeah. There's men a- suck according to the media. We fucking suck. Everything we do is not Especially good white enough. men. Yeah. It's like, we're, we're fucking dog shit. We're trash. Yeah. Well, it's don't the demonisation of alpha male... Well, not alpha. It's the demonisation of any masculine trait. Mm. So... Mate, fucking... Yeah. Get fit. Be fucking motivated. Be, be a yeah. strong, disciplined man. Um, I think that's a... A massive bit, uh, positive in the right direction mm. that will help you control your anger issues if you have them, and that'll also give you the strength to be vulnerable and assess. Well, maybe I do have some issues I need to go to see someone about, so yeah. I don't take out those anger issues on a, a weaker, vulnerable woman. Yeah, and people that have got a 
better idea of people have their jobs for a reason. There's mm. degrees in it for a reason. There's there's services that exist for a reason. It's because they work. Mm. So you don't know what you don't know. Like you're like, nah, fuck, that's not for me. You might have one chat with somebody mm. and they could give you the most sound piece of advice mm. ever. Like nobody knows everything. Mm. Like it's something as simple as with Chels, I, I would consider myself pretty smart emotionally and with overeating, I would eat because I don't want to waste food because growing up, yeah, yeah, as yeah. I tell you, I don't want to waste food. But she said, well, if you eat it, and you don't want it and you're already full, it's being wasted on your body. So it doesn't mm. matter if it's inside you or if it's in the bin, mm. it's both going to waste because it's going to be wasted as fat on you yeah. or as a decay in the ground. And I was like, fuck, man, I've actually never thought about it like that way and that's changed my whole perspective. Mm. Whereas I'm like, no, nah, I fucking know how to deal with this. I can yeah. do that. I just eat because, you know, I don't want to waste food. Yeah. So <laughs> something as simple as a small conversation. You, someone who knows yeah. better. Yeah. 100%, the professionals. The professionals know. Yeah. And that's why I'm... Because I'm we could be wrong about everything. We yeah. Think. We're just saying what's helped or patterns of thinking that have helped us. Yeah. But, but if we you, might if be fucking wrong, bro. We could be completely 100%. cooked. 100%. What, like, but the, I guess it's nice to know like what we went through and what we did to help ourselves in certain situations um, because you might have that one person of these thousands and thousands of people who listen to this yeah. one podcast, that one person who goes, I've gone through that exact same thing. Yeah. That's going to help me. Yeah, that that that's all that matters. Yeah, um, but I don't know. Like, I do. I do think it always. I think it comes back to trying to better yourself and mm. and be the strongest version of yourself you possibly can. Because if you are, you're not gonna do things like domestic violence because yeah. you have that self control and that understanding. Um, even like this morning, like I, I I've something I've adopted recently, and fuck, people will, will cringe at this because it's a cliche. But I've been getting up at four fifty. Mm. Every single morning, I don't like getting up at four fifty. Used to go to bed at four twenty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I don't like getting up at four fifty. But I know that if I don't get up at four fifty, I don't have a bet like a the best day that I could possibly have. Mm. I know if I get up at four fifty, I get up, I have my uh, coffee, I listen to a like a maybe a bit of Alan Watt stuff. I do my meditation, I do my Theraband, I do my my exercises, and by six o'clock. I'm ready to go. Mm. And then if my daughter comes through and wakes up, then, you know, then, uh, well, it is what it is. But mm. uh, I've uh, at least got that stuff done to make my day better. And unfortunately for me, for whatever reason, if I don't get up at 4.50, I don't have the best day I possibly can. <laughs> and if is that, that means, autism or? Well. <laughs> it, or OCD. It, it, it just means I don't. At uh, 4.51, I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah, I, well. I, yeah, I get what you mean. If yeah. I get up at 5.30, still yeah. early, that's you know, that's half an hour later that I I could have got other stuff done yeah. and then I don't get to spend 100% of my time with Scotty or whatever that mm. ends up being. But for me, that getting up early is actually... Horses. I hate the fact that I have to do it now. Yeah. Like r this morning, I got I knew, for example, I was playing golf at 8. So I couldn't even push back what I wanted to do before the 8, uh, eight o'clock. So I had to get up at 4.50 mm. to get it done. If that means I have to have a nap later on this afternoon, it means I do. Yeah. Uh, Horses for courses. So I'm, I, I've, I'm struggling with something at the moment where I'm feeling bad because I've been sleeping in till like nine or ten. Yeah, but that's your thing. Like, you yeah, can, you can be fine to do that. I know, but like, I feel I've been feeling guilty and bad. So maybe there's really? something behind that. Yeah, I need to remind yeah. myself. Like, I've quit teaching so I can do that, and mm. most of my stuff happens at night time. Like mm. all of my gigs and everything is night time. Mm. I'm my most productive at night, mm -hmm. but I don't like going to bed. So, like, I'm up till, like, 1 a.m. every night mm. and it's kind of doom scrolling and whatever, but I'm, like, mm. part of me is, like, that's because I know I don't have to get up early in the morning. Mm. So, I'd like to. When I was getting up at 6, I did get heaps more done, you know. Mm. Yeah, you squeeze more into your day. But at the same time, I remember I, I quit teaching so I can fucking sleep in, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love a good sleep You also in. deserve – you deserve what you've got there now. Mm. Like, you worked hard to get it. People see the result. Yeah. They don't see the process. Yeah. I think I sent you that clip of Jimmy Carr saying that. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah, they don't see the 10 hours of riding every day. Like, ah. see, but that's not what I'm doing, so I'm getting a little bit... Okay. I'm, again, from my goal session, I, I need to restructure because the amount of time I spend on comedy each day... Mm. Not enough. Less than five minutes. Okay. It's all the admin side. So that's potentially not guilt. That's your inner knowing that you're not achieving everything you could be achieving. Yeah. 
Because mm. everything I'm doom, doing... That doom scrolling, if you're going to be up to that late, maybe yeah. you should be doing something effective with that time. Yeah. But trying to step back from the teaching, I'm in a little bit of a weird spot in my life at the moment mm. where I'm like... I think it's just those three bad reviews from teacher coming <laughs> like fucking eating away well, at me, man. Because I was like that... I went away thinking, fuck, that was a fire show. Like, yeah. all the responses I'm going to get are just going to blow smoke up my ass. Yeah. And like three of them, one of them said the best part was intermission. I'm like, how can you not, <laughs> how can you not enjoy the show that was on? Like, that was it such was, a was, fucking banger, man. It's incredible. But, but it has helped me realise, yeah, maybe I'm a bit crude, maybe I'm a bit vulgar. Maybe I, with the teacher crowd, I, I won't talk about uh, like, Maybe drugs or like. Well, maybe just you maybe you can tone it back a little bit to make yeah. it more palatable. And if you, but you still touch uh, toe the edge. Yeah, you know? like I think there's still room for that. I haven't even watched it back. I need to watch it back. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. But like, you, like I said, man, you deserve it. You like mm. you've gone through a lot, and you still got. And people always see the Jimmy Cars, the, the famous people say you didn't see the process to get here. Yeah, but they they don't see like people like us yeah. who are still in it. Yeah. And we're probably getting out the ass end of it. Yeah. You know, we're not millionaires. Yeah. We're not fucking uber famous. But we're out the ass end of it. We're sort of but we're still going through the process. Yeah. And like people don't see, you know, uh, like for myself, they don't see like a failed marriage along the way. Yeah. Or they don't want to see or experience the failed marriage along the way because of the being vacant because you've put in so much into your drive. Mm. They don't see or they don't want to experience um fucking having panic attacks in a bathtub mm. because you're worried where your next paycheck's coming from. Mm. They don't want to experience going through your daughter's coin jar mm. so you can fucking pay for petrol so you can take her to OT. Yeah. They don't want to ex- they don't want to experience that. But they you then see the me Amazon. playing golf on a Tuesday morning. Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, lucky for some." Yeah. That's not yeah, luck, it's not man. Luck. Yeah. It's a lot of pain and I'm out the ass end of it now. Yeah. But that was things I dealt with and experienced and and the anxieties of of the unknown, um, they can fucking break you down. Mm. And I think the thing that people don't want to hear the most is they have to abandon uh, control mm. and then let go to faith in the universe and God, they don't want to hear that. Mm. No one wants to hear that. Yeah, because it's foreign. And when I say God, I don't mean yeah. Jesus Christ, Christianity, faith. Mm. I mean universe source, whatever you want to call mm. it. But people don't want to hear that. Speaking of which, I need a, I need to re- reconvene with God soon. I've got yeah, I've got my ticket to see him, so I'm gonna. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Go, uh, I need uh, after. I'm just. I'm waiting for my little chat with him. <laughs> until after my run yeah. <laughs> I don't want to fuck with anything at the moment because I am yeah. I, like like we talk about uh, me well, going through all that hard stuff to get to where I am mm. and I feel like I've created a fucking beast of a person that mm. can j- is bulletproof I feel like anyone can say anything to me I can I feel like physically I'm stronger I feel like I am stronger in every sense of, the, um, of what a person could be at the moment and I feel like potentially mm. going into this ultra that's the best place i could be in mm. mentally and physically <laughs> i don't want to have mushrooms and then completely yeah, break down totally so yeah. um after after that i'm gonna go have a little visit with uh Awan yeah <laughs> and go see um just have a little chat it's fun man yeah. as well like i miss i'm i miss that place yeah i fucking i just yeah i uh i Need to do a bit more healing because God tested me after oh, yeah. the things that I had seen. Mm. It put me, he was like, oh, yeah, you really believe in love? All, all and those tests. <laughs> yeah, it's like, do you really believe in free love? And mm. have you really let this person go through love? Or, you know, and, you know, then it presented a position, uh, it presented a scenario where it was, mm. well, let's see, can't. Yeah. And I've, I think I've, I semi failed that. What? Yeah, you know? I failed a test as well. So not with not with love, but I failed a test as well. Yeah. And you know, after you're like, that was fucking test, yeah. and I failed miserably. And then you go, then you that's when you realize, yeah. oh, I'm not got more work to do. Yeah, yeah. you're like, oh, I'm through. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, nah. and it's and also understanding you're never through ever. Yeah, you consistent. The more you know, the more you realize you know nothing. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I think I failed it pretty, not miserably, but I just allowed my ego to mm. to spit out some venom. It wasn't venom, it was just like, yeah, I could have just gone, okay, no worries, mm. that's fine, see ya. But you know. in a sense, I would be, I would say you are always meant to do that. Yeah. Because, and this brings up some quotes yeah. Okay. Actually, this is a quote that yeah. I wanted to talk about. Um, that, um, but the so thing is that it, the timing was divine because it's helped me immensely deal with the situation. Now, would you would you say this um, it relates to a situation that you you've just had? How many quotes have you got? I've just written down three. And have you written? Have you made two of them yourself? Um, or are these all? One of them's myself. Okay. Cool. Um, but. So I, I'm going to see, I'm gonna see, see yeah, this one. I want, I, I want I set Branchy a challenge for me and him. We're going to write three, make up two, and have one from somewhere else. See if we can pick the one that we've created. Okay. So, uh, and I think this one relates to that. So it's really good. Consistent reinforcement is not as effective as consistent recalling. Consistent so, reinforcement is not as effective. So, so as in telling yourself one thing is not as yeah, good so as re- remembering how you felt or something? Or? So the lesson. So recalling is sort of is more so what you've just done. Mm. So you're, you're, you're trying to consistently reinforce, this is the way I want to live, this is the way I want to live. And that, to a point, will work. Um, but you're going to fall out of that yeah. trap, whereas you've actually just had a moment where you've recalled oh fuck that's not how i was meant to handle that situation yeah. and it's like the the recalling the event is a far bigger kick up the ass and will definitely have a bigger impact long term because you will remember mm. next time you'll be like no whereas if you're just constantly trying to reinforce this is the way i'm supposed to do it you're going to forget sometimes and your ego will get the better of you mm-hmm. whereas i think when you get that real fucking tough lesson like that might have been a real tough lesson for you mm. that's going to have a far bigger impact than consistently trying to reinforce yeah. your lesson there yep. or your, your ideas. Yep. So um, I don't know if you think that's – if that relates to you yep. there. But I think by now you reflecting on it, yeah, it seems like you've had a far bigger impact than trying – because, what, consistently trying to do that didn't work, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. So um, – Yeah. What's your other one? Um, I like this. I oh, fucking – Oh, I, lo- I love this one. Um, life is about stories, but what is good... F- ah, sorry. Life is about stories, but what is a good story... Oh, sorry, let me redo this. Life is about stories, but what good is a story if you can't speak each other's language? Yeah, that's pretty good. So that, that one, obviously, that one's just like um, that whole idea of like me trying to force my opinion on you or tell you a better way to do it, yeah. you're not ready unless you're ready. If I'm saying, si, stronzo. Yeah, yeah. Questo, yeah. questo la cucina. Mm. Well, I don't know. Don't solo, know solo, solo. Mm-hmm. Well, fuck, I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. Well, I'm not in your wavelength. Yeah. yeah. So if you're not ready to hear something, yeah. if you're not speaking the same language as me, yeah. you're not, it's, n- it's not going to have an impact. It's like that speech, that Jim Carrey speech that set me on my path. Mm. That set me on my path of you know, chasing my dreams and fucking that, you know, all that. That, that cliche stuff that I, I was preaching early on, which I still I like purpose and drive. But now I listen back to that speech and you're like, fuck, mm. oh, I wasn't listening. Yeah. Oh, now I listen to this and I hear that message in this and that message in this because I wasn't ready. I wasn't speaking that language. Yeah. So that is sometimes you'll hear a song fucking two years later and go, oh, that lyric, I get it now. Yeah. So that's that's what that point is mm. um, and I really like that quote. Mm. Do you have one? Uh, even the dimmest spark lights the darkest room. Mm. I like that. So the I smallest like little bit of hope, no matter how pitch black it is, no matter how fucking overwhelming and looming it is, mm. if you have a flint, that will light that whole darkness. Mm. So one little positive vibe can can create. I do like that. Mm. That's a good one. Um, a true knight possesses the power to slay a dragon but chooses to tame it. Oh, that goes back onto the um, idea of what we were just talking about, having mm. the power to the power to hurt someone mm. but the self-control to not use it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. And yeah. I think that's important. That is that 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 is for example, like I t- I just talked about myself building myself into this 
beast of a person and uh, the idea is that I now need to let that – I use that guy to get through the tough times. Mm. I'm not in the tough times anymore. Yeah. So I actually need to turn into another person who's ready to embrace abundance and, and, yeah. uh, and accept that. That doesn't mean I can't recall on that, that yeah. beast of a person that I've, I've Got. created. Mm. So it's a bit of both. But, yeah, I think um, – yeah – that's that's a, that's I like that one. I think the most having that self control and that goes back to the men, yeah. like creating a strong man that has a self control. Um, I've actually got five. Uh, cool. Even the prettiest flower can have the most venomous poison. Mm. What do you reckon that means? Women. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mate. Yeah. Yeah. No matter how something good looks, it could be so detrimental and bad oh, for you. Uh, yes. Like. It could look like it's going to be incredible, but the actual effect it's going to have on have on you is, is the, the destruction. Old, well, the old joke for the crazy hot scale, yeah, like, like it's a joke, but it's to a point. Like, yeah. just because they're fucking hot doesn't mean they're going to be an incredible person yeah. or a, a good for you. Yeah, um, nor the other way around. Yeah, um, just because it's ugly, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doesn't mean it's going to or just something something that looks brute. Brutish, yeah, can be amazing for you. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can't unsend a word spoken in anger. So can't unsend it. Can't unsend a word spoken in anger. No. If you've got a text message, whatever you decide to write, you mm. could always delete that text. But if you said it to that person, they hear it. Like you, you can't take it back. No. Can when you, you can you ref yeah no you can't yeah once it's out there it's going to do its damage it will you can't unshoot a bullet that might have been better mm. <laughs> you can't yeah. unshoot a bullet mm. Bec- yeah what's, what's your last one um my last one is let me get it up i got some i got more yeah. i got heaps more uh, but they oh, i'll go through them in a minute but um uh, every significant change in history started with someone suggesting this could be better. Yeah, nice. And that could very well be you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's good. That's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. I think that's. Uh, it all starts with a thought. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can improve this system. Yeah. I'm going to try to make it better. And at some point, someone did it. Why can't it be you? Yeah. Well, the yeah. last one is life sucks, suck harder. <laughs> <laughs> life sucks, suck harder. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't know about that one. I just like the sound of that one. Okay. So, which ones are mine and which ones? I reckon your ones is the recall, and what was the second one? I think yours are the first two. Uh, mine was only the consistent reinforcement. Um, is not as effective as consistent recall? recalling. Yeah, that I only did one for you. I only did one, yeah. and I did two. Yeah, nice. Real ones. All so. of those were mine. Yeah? <laughs> Except the life sucks, suck harder. That was uh, Joe Gatto. He, well, just, he just goes, hey, I hope... It was Instagram. He's like, I hope you're having a beautiful day out there. Just remember, life sucks, suck harder. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, th- all the other ones were really good, man. Yeah. Um, I took a couple of photos of some uh, awesome quotes as well. Um, let me read one here. Um, <clears throat> one day, the people that don't even... Bu- one day the people that don't even believe in you will tell you, will tell everyone, sorry, will tell everyone they met you. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a belter. So many times, man. Like, great, great example is when I played footy with Buddy. Yeah. When I was 14, 15, I never thought Bud was, like, going to be the superstar he was. Yeah. But now I tell everyone, man, I played with Buddy. Yeah. You know? Yep. So, and we became friends. You know? <laughs> so it was like, um, turn your wounds into wisdom. Yep. I like that one. Sure, use your hurt and, and experience. Use that experience to to learn from it and be able to help others and yourself again. Yep. Uh, a good life has some bad days too. Yep. That one's good. This is, oh, I like this one. Uh, this is a Japanese proverb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and what that means is, well, what does that mean, Dale? It means uh, have a good meal. Uh, thank you. Itadakimasu. <laughs> Could I say? I'm I glad. Eat a meal, please. I'm glad it was real Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> not just. Um, so this is a Japanese proverb: the bamboo that bends is stronger than the oak that resists. Oh, so be flexible with your situations. 
Yeah. Yeah. Don't be rigid and stuck in your ways. A hundred percent. Yeah. And it and it can bend and it can it can yeah. Go well, my it. dick must be made of bamboo. <laughs> 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 I like that one. That one's uh, awesome. I don't know if I did any more. Um, oh, this one's pretty cool. This is the yeah the last one. Death is not the greatest loss in life. The greatest loss is what dies inside us while we live. Mm, that's very uh, mm. philosophical. Yes. Who was that one? That was uh, who wrote that or said that? That was uh, Norman Cousins. Death is easy. It's the people that have to deal with your death, which is hard. Death for you is the easy part. Yeah. So well, it's quite. It was quite um, like my ego death because you, you you asked in the podcast, and I must not have picked up on it correctly. You asked when I was talking about my ego death. You were asking, were you actually going to die? And mm. I said no, but I was. Mm. I was. At, I actually had to die. I had to let go. I had to be willing to die, um, and that was really difficult because of the fact that I had a daughter mm. that I wanted to be there for. Mm. And um, and you're right. That's the thing that goes through your head. You're like the death for me is like I, I mean. In my in my mind, death is uh, my relationship with death has completely changed, and um, I no longer fear death. I don't. I'm, what's the Robbie? What's go, the ro- go get the jab? Yeah. What's the Robbie Williams uh, song? It's like, I'm loving angels instead. Yeah, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to live, no. but I ain't keen on. I don't want to die, but I ain't keen on living either. No, it was. Oh. Um, uh, I'm. I'm not afraid to die. Um, Oh fuck! I'll find that lyric. Mm. But anyway, uh, there's a yeah. I'm I'm not afraid of dying, um, but I just don't want to. Okay. Yeah. I like. I, I want to be here. Yeah. Um, this is going to be very poignant when we do die. People will clip this up and show it at our funeral. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, that's it. So the thing that uh, not scares me about death is the fact that I'd have to leave Scotty here to grow up on her own mm. and never know if I. If someone was going to guide her in the right way. Mm. Um, so when I had to let go, I had to let go of responsibility of that. And that was probably the hardest thing, fully letting go of being there to help Scotty. Yeah. Which made me realise yeah, my life is no longer about prioritising me. It's about my daughter. That's why I don't want to have kids. Because mm. <laughs> I don't... I want to be about me for a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I wonder what that... I wonder if that, um, that, that selfless attitude is... Positive or negative? Depends, ma'am. It depends on... There's no right or wrong answer. No, yeah. Because if if you've allowed your dreams and hopes to die mm. by having a, a kid, mm. then potentially, like, that could be a negative because you've put aside things that you want to do and mm. it could be greatness for you and it could bring change and, and hope and joy and love to others. Yeah. And you've put that aside for a person. Yep. And you're hoping that they do better than you. Or it could be, well, this is the ultimate act of love where you're giving your life mm. to another life. Does it matter? Anyway. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't anything matter? Nothing yeah. really. So and it is a that probably ends up being the ultimate realization that nothing matters. Mm. And it's just about experiencing what you can. Yeah. Um, but if the might as well make the experience as, as best as possible. Yeah. As fun as possible. But living in service of others is quite rewarding. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be something to it. Because otherwise, well, these your, billionaires wouldn't become philanthropists. And well, that's also what you're doing. Like, if you're getting up there d- telling laughs, yeah. you're doing it for them to make them laugh. That's they true. Get, you I are, do it for me. You I do, do it, it for you. You're I, self-serving, but, and, but still. It does make it makes me feel good to make people feel good. Yeah. So, so you're, still, you're still, to a point, are living in service of others. For the right others. price. <laughs> 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 but that's it. You're living in service of others, and I think that's a, that's a, that is a positive. So mm. you are selfless in, in that way. Yeah. But, yeah, when you prioritise someone's life over yours, it's um, that's a fucking, that's a big, like, that's a big kick in the dick. You you start to go, Jesus. fuck man like I w- like what's that There's a, someone that tells a joke about the wife like um like I would die for you um and then your kid or your daughter you're like I would fucking kill for you mm. <laughs> like there is uh, there is different levels yeah right it's something about the kid um yeah I die for my wife but 
Oh, I'd fucking kill for my daughter. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's an interesting one. It's a but good quote. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember. It's a joke. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's true. Yeah. That's why everyone... I liked it, I guess. But yeah. how long we got? We've done a little... Uh, that's that? a good little hour session, man. All that's right. That'll well, do. 12-12. Tell- yeah. That's... Uh, I just seen 12-12 on the thing. That's, uh, that's a sign. Well, We've got everything out we needed to get out. Let's do just a real quick one story. Oh, yeah. Sick. If I can find it. Spooky story. Just one spooky story. I'm so keen to do a whole episode of spooky stories. As a lead. Or. I've been watching Baby Reindeer. That's enough. Or, I haven't watched that yet. But maybe to lighten the mood of these mental health episodes, we can do a spooky story at the end of every episode. Okay. What does that take away from that? <laughs> I don't know. We had fun. Uh, yeah. Good chat today. Well, this one's just, uh, this is, what's the creepiest glitch in the matrix you've experienced? My friend Sarah was in a nightclub drunk off her face when she got an overwhelming urge to tell a total stranger that her leg hurts. Edit. It didn't hurt at the time. She just had an urge to say it. It's all a bit strange. She ignored it, but it doesn't stop. So she walks up to this guy and says, I know this is crazy, but I've got a huge urge to tell you that my leg hurts. I know that's crazy again. Sorry. He bursts into tears. Turns out his dad had just died and they made a pact before that if there was an afterlife, he would get a message to him saying a totally random phrase... So there could be no mistakes, which they decided on the phrase was, I've hurt my leg. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> I love that sort of shit, eh? <laughs> that's like... Um, that clip is going viral, tell me. <laughs> wow, that's from Reddit. It's, yeah. But that reminds me of my my mum's personal experience. So my auntie, um, I think I've told you about her on the pod before. She pretended she was the Mother Mary in the yeah, nursing home. Yeah, So she said to my mum, my mum said to her, you better, f- when she found out she had cancer, she's like, if there's something there, if there's enough life, you better tell, you better fucking show me. I need to know. You mm. know, I need to know you're okay. So at a coffin, at a funeral, the coffin's going down. And as a joke, she got everybody to play Ding Dong, the witch is dead. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Witch or witch, the wicked witch, as her coffin's lowering, right? Okay. That's on Friday. Mum got to work on Monday f- working for a chiropractor. Yeah. She's got appointment, appointment, email, random subject line. Ding dong, the witch is dead hmm. from some company or whatever it was. And she opened it up. Had nothing to do with the witch being dead. It was just a random subject line that got sent to her on the Monday after Mahani's <sighs> funeral. Mum was like, oh, I gave me goosebumps. Like, there was no reason for this mm. email to say, ding dong, the witch is dead, you know? Oh, I like so. that. <laughs> Mate, those are, your, your, that ghost story about the, the, ha- the house yeah. with, with the kid when you were younger, Yeah, that one that one gets me. Yeah. But um, maybe you can retell that in a spooky episode for yeah, cool. new listeners. Yeah. But. I always forget, that, like, people that have been listening from the very start, Yeah, you know, you would have heard, but it would have been all the rudimentary um, – Eps. So maybe I don't feel bad repeating any stories yeah. for new listeners, and I'm sure old listeners, it doesn't matter. I can repeat my ghost story, I guess. Um, lady on the end of the bed. Yeah, oh. I fucking had this chick into me and she left. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sick, anything you want to plug, Delby? Uh, Perth Comedy Festival shows this Friday and Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a bone, <laughs> I've got the structure of the show because it's all freestyle. I just need to figure out what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to show Chicken King in the middle of it. Yeah, because I want to show how pre-written doesn't really work for me. Yeah, okay. Like, cool. And it, it'll be a nice breather. Yeah, from yeah. From makeup. And it's funny, yeah. So I'm going to show them the original two and a half minutes of who the Chicken King is. Yeah. And just see if it works on a non-up and joke audience. Love and it. And go, this is the song about this Chicken King. Cool. So that's like a five minute breather. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've got a few ideas which we're going to do on this next pod, which we will chuck on our Patreon because we're due for a Patreon episode. Sick, yeah. It so, will be the next Patreon episode. Me, yeah. you, Wolfie and Blake yep. Richardson talking yep. about jokes. Yeah. Cool. So Perth Comedy Fest, Friday, Saturday. It's called Comedian Rap City. And then on Sunday, May 5th, which is this Sunday, um, at the Balmoral 5 o'clock matinee show, mm-hmm. uh, two white guys rapping Encore, Encore. We've done 30 tickets, which is pretty sick. Cool. So, I uh, plugged that last night for you at Quiz. Sick. Um, are you doing... Any comedy the week of the fourteenth? Uh, yeah, eighteenth of May. I've got um, sesh stories. Is so that I've done uh, fifteen? What, d- what night is that? Saturday night, nine thirty. Perfect uh, timing. Won't work. Uh, are you doing Laugh Resort on Wednesday? Yeah, cool. Yeah, Dave absolutely. Reynolds is here, so he wants to come to some shows. Okay, cool. So, yeah. um, so I'll be doing that with Dave Cohen. Okay, cool. So I forgot I was on it, so they tagged me in, it, in the event. I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> well, so I'm going to get you to cover quiz. I'll do my quiz next Wednesday if you cover. Yep. 
what, what that's easy. Got. I think, uh, yeah, Dave Reynolds is on. Uh, listeners, message us if you want us to get him back on and just talk shit because he's yeah. a fucking legend. Awesome. Which I think we will. Anyway. Yeah, he's won that race. I'm going to win this already. Yeah, he's, he's Since actually, he's been on, he won. Um, yeah. Um, and he's, uh, yeah, he's a fucking legend. He listens just, to every episode. Just message so. me then. Did How he? weird's that? Yeah. Oh, Especially we're getting him on. Morning. That yeah. is that's so on. Like, so Dave's uh we'll get Dave on and um I'll see if he can hook us up with like Craig Lowndes or someone like that. Um sure. maybe a, an old school That'll be a glitch in the Matrix. You yeah, and Craig me Lance. and Craig Lance talking to each other. That'd be so sick. I'll see if we can sort that. And then um uh for me, yeah, I'll just be doing quizzes and um looking at this room. I'm trying to get some spots. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna be doing these jokes, writing these jokes, so um I have three new ideas that I'm fucking so excited about. I just need to get them right and start practicing them on stage. So I want to start getting back up. All right. Hard, so but, um, listen on Patreon. Yeah. Should yeah. be good, but sick. Thanks yeah. for uh, thanks for the chat, Daniel. Good digest. Mm.